This video is going to go into a discussion of the short essay question set two for the United States history regions held in New York State. The second set is what I refer to as the reliability set. So in this you have two tasks. The first one is describe the historical context surrounding documents one and two and the second task is to analyze document two and explain how audience or purpose or bias or point of view affects this document's use as a reliable source of evidence. So I recommend if there are two bullets for you to do two body paragraphs, one for each of the tasks. Describing the historical context around the documents does not mean you are simply summarizing the documents. What you need to do is pay attention to the source and the content of the document to then determine about what time period this is happening, what's going on in the United States or the world at this point, and how does this thing connect to the documents or the events discussed in the documents. So in this case, the first document is the South Carolina Ordinance of Secession from 1860, and the second document is Abraham Lincoln's first inaugural address from March 4th, 1861. So when I look at this, I'm gonna be thinking, okay, these are documents from the beginning of the Civil War. You could talk about long-term or short-term um, causes that have led up to this. So personally, I might start talking about failures of compromise over um, slavery. Perhaps I'm talking about states versus federal rights. I'm going into the decade of crisis. I'm talking about sectionalism. You could talk about the Stephen Douglas debates and ultimately South Carolina seceding and then Abraham Lincoln becoming elected the president of the United States and giving his inaugural speech. For that body paragraph on the historical context, you definitely want to make sure you have outside information as I stated with like sectionalism or decade of crisis. And then you want to make sure you're referencing both documents. So talking about, you know, what the South Carolina Ordinance of Secession did and then what Abraham Lincoln's um, concerns for. For the second set, you want to make sure that you are making sure in your second paragraph you are analyzing document two for reliability. So set two has you do something different than set one with the documents. Set two's reliability asks you to explain how audience or purpose or bias or point of view affects the documents used as a reliable source of evidence. Three common mistakes I see students make here are, one, for the historical context, they summarize the documents. Don't do that. Two, when they talk about reliability, they fail to actually say whether or not it's reliable or how audience purpose, bias, or point of view affects that reliability. And then the third way that students often make mistakes here is they talk about all four of those. They talk about audience, purpose, bias, and point of view. So don't do that. The first body paragraph should be historical context, what's happening around that time period that has led to the development of those documents and events. The second body paragraph, you're talking about audience, purpose, bias, or point of view and how that affects the reliability of the document. So when we're talking about the reliability of a document, we're talking about its values and limitations. So if you've taken an IB history class or perhaps an AP class, you've probably talked about OPCVL. And that stands for origin, purpose, content, values, and limitations. So reliability focuses on the values and limitations of a source. So how useful is this source um, or not how useful? Right? So when we think about the values, like what does this help us understand or show us or tell us about time and place, about society, about what people were thinking about at the time? Is there any new information that really helps us understand that time period better? And the limitation might be like, is it biased? How so? You can't just say it's biased. You need to explain how. What information is not there? Um, was there information specifically left out? How does this influence our interpretation or our understanding? So these are all things that you definitely want to think about when talking about um, this document. Now keep in mind that you have to also connect it to the audience, purpose, point of view, or bias. 
You should also keep in mind that a document could be reliable, somewhat reliable, or not reliable at, at all. I always tell my students that only a Sith Lord deals in absolutes, and so you probably shouldn't say it's 100% reliable or not reliable, but someplace in the middle is going to be safe. So you want to think about how that is going to come into play when you're looking at documents. So for example, this document set two has document two as Lincoln's inaugural speech. Some ways that it's reliable, um, if we're looking at the audience, would be that he's reassuring the South that the federal government would not be the aggressor against him. But if you're looking at point of view or bias, that can help you discuss whether or not it's reliable or unreliable. So you can kind of get that middle point. So Lincoln's first inaugural address is a reliable source because it gives us information information about his core beliefs about the legality of secession and the importance of preserving the union. However, he is very strongly opposed to slavery. This is influencing his policies of not allowing slavery to expand, which can impact its reliability or weaken the reliability of source information about the secession crisis. So you could talk about both of those components and that's going to allow you to have a really nice analysis hitting that top score on the rubric. The top score of the rubric asks you to thoroughly develop both aspects of the task in depth by discussing the historical context surrounding the documents and explain how audience or purpose or bias or point of view affects the use of document two as a reliable source of evidence. It's more analytical than descriptive. So talking about that how and why. And then of course it integrates outside information and supports the theme with facts and examples from the documents. So you wanna make sure that you're referencing the documents by name, and then perhaps also in parentheses, say doc number at the end of your sentence. So for example, this anchor paper is a level five. This is from the New York State Department of Education. And as you can see, it's not necessarily perfect, but it's gonna hit those marks. I do not recommend that you um, do shorthand on the essay. This is just an example, but they talk about like when Lincoln was elected on the Republican platform <clears throat> to stop the spread of slavery, document two, South Carolina decided to leave the union and make itself a separate and independent state, doc one. So I always recommend that you put the document number in parentheses at the end. However, a strong essay should really also reference the document by name, its author or, or description. So if it's a photograph, you could say like, this photograph from Birmingham, or in this case for document two, you say Abraham Lincoln's inaugural address, or document one, in South Carolina's order of secession, right? You wanna make sure it's very clear which document you're referencing, but as you can see in this sample, documents are being referenced. Uh, they're only talking about document two for paragraph two, and they explicitly say Lincoln's speech is actually reliable because it represents his long-held viewpoint. So they're talking about perspective here or point of view. I'm going to go ahead and link these resources in the comments below so you can check those out. Feel free to reach out to myself or your teachers if you have additional questions.